all those Anzac veterans, those First World War veterans have gone. This is their legacy. The collection is their legacy. It's what they did. It's their record. That's enshrined here. Does the fact that the people who were involved in these such significant events were actually holding these items, were touching these items or wearing them, is that that tangible link with history, is that important? Chris, I, I think that's much of the appeal behind them. It's, uh, these are palpably things that people used, handled, uh, made and, and used in action in many cases. And I think what they do is bring back uh, the reality of that story, which is actually much more powerful when it's shed of all, it's stripped of all its uh, romanticising and the gloss sometimes that is attached to it. This book tells the story of the campaign in a new way a hundred years on. But the qualities that Australians showed in that campaign, their first campaign, shine through. It doesn't shrink, the book doesn't shrink from covering the dark side of the campaign as well. There are thousands of pieces in the Australian War Memorial's Gallipoli collection, but for author and historian Dr Peter Pedersen, the art of Ellis Silas truly represents Anzac minus the mythology. This piece is called Roll Call. Now Silas wrote in his diary about it, Dawn, the Roll Call, how heartbreaking it is. Name after name is called and the reply, a long, deep silence. There are so few of us to answer our names. Just a line of weary, ashen-faced men. And behind us, a mound of silent heaps, once our comrades. These are the survivors of one of the attacks that Silas participated in. The, either the attack on Baby 700 on the 2nd of May or on Quinn's Post around about the middle of May. Both of them were so poorly conceived and so poorly executed that they verged on lunacy and the casualties were dreadful. This painting, I think, it's not as well known as the Lambert, well known as the Lambert paintings yeah. of the landing and the neck, but it's very important in its own right because of what it shows and the spirit that it conveys. The artwork is one element of the Gallipoli collection. It also includes hundreds of artefacts, many collected personally by official historian Charles Bean on the post-war battlefields. Chris, these are a few examples of the sorts of objects that have a, an inner meaning that can only be brought out by the story behind them. They're embedded with the human story. In some cases, we don't know the full story. The bugle, for example, was found after the campaign in 1921. They actually resonate with the humanity of those men who were cut off and surrounded there. The bullet damage to the bugle, there's a human element to this. These relics, if you like, were left there in this spot where this clash occurred. No soldiers ever got that far inland again for the rest of the eight months of the campaign. There are also hundreds of letters and documents. From General Monash's last letter home on the eve of the Anzac landings, the one regret he'll have will be the grief his passing will cause his wife and family. And he says to his wife, I've always loved you and I know that you have loved me and will honour my memory. And that brings a lump to your throat yeah. even now. Does this collection also tell the story of the nurses and the women and who were so important in that Indeed process? it does. And I mean, there's nurses' uniforms, there's nurses' kit um, reflected in the, in the exhibition all of those things, and especially in Anzac Treasures in the book, the uh, significant figures that emerge from our nurses on many occasions. The story of the Anzac nurses will be part of the massive redevelopment of the World War I galleries at the War Memorial. The $30 million project is the most significant upgrade in the War Memorial's history. It will showcase the cream of the Gallipoli collection. These are considered sacred objects almost in, in Australia's military history. How do you feel about the explosion in the souvenir industry around Anzac, particularly leading up to the centenary? Is it unedifying to see Anzac themed cuckoo clocks and things like this when, when you've spent so much of pretty treasured objects? It is, 
But then again, those are souvenirs. They're not things that are recovered from the battlefields. And let's, and let's face it, in this day and age, it's almost inevitable. But you've got to make the distinction between those things and what we present at the, at the War Memorial and what the memorial is about. What these particular objects do, because they're genuine, they're the real thing, is embed us back in the realities of the story. Uh, beneath all of the mythologising and the romanticising of the Anzac story, there is a real story about real events, real people and a real place.